In this video we demonstrate how to estimate an ADL model in Oxmetrics. We also show how to estimate the corresponding error correction model. So we have a data set for Danish consumption C, Danish income Y, and then we have the first differences and we have the second differences of all variables. The data set spans the sample from 71 up to 2010. So first we want to plot the variables. Here we have C, we have Y, plot them together. This is what they look like. But we will actually estimate a model for the first differences. So let's plot DC and DY instead. They are given here, DC and DY. To estimate the ADL model, we go to PZGIF. We select models for time series, single equation modeling, and then we formulate the model. And we want to estimate the model presented in slides 45 to 49. So that's an ADL11 model for DC. But just note that the variable we call DC here corresponds to the variable called C in the slides. Likewise for Y, our DY variable here corresponds to the variable labeled Y in the slides. So we want to estimate an ADL model for DC, we want one lag of DC, then we want DY and one lag of DY. So we include first DC, here note that it's selected as our explanatory variable, Y. Automatically we have a constant added and then we have the lag of DC one period. Then we do the same for DY, so now we have DY in the same period and we have DY with a lag. Could also add trend or seasonals, centered seasonals, but we're not going to do that here. We click OK, we choose estimation by OLS, and then we specify the sample to be the full sample that we have available. Just note that the first two observations are not included. We used one to do the first difference, and then we condition on the second observation. Click OK, and we get this output. This is what the estimated model looks like. This is comparable to what is presented on slide 46. So here we have the autoregressive parameter, minus 0.22, that's the coefficient of the lag of DC. We have a constant term, which we usually call delta. And then we have dy, coefficient of 0.22, and dy with a lag, coefficient of 0.17. Note that if we assume stationarity of the variables, we can do inference based on the standard normal distribution that is used to calculate the standard error here, as well as the t values over here. So in this case, all the coefficients we have here appear to be uh, statistically significant, different from zero. Then we get some additional output down here. We get the value of the log likelihood. We get the number of parameters. We get the estimated uh, residual variance, number of observations, and so on. And then we also get this automatic tests. We have a test for no autocorrelation of fifth order. Note that this cannot be rejected. Then we get the test for no arch, we get the test for normality, and test for no heteroskedasticity. In this model, it appears that we don't have any problem with uh, autocorrelation or arch effects, but normality of the residuals is clearly rejected. So to understand why, it's useful to go to the test menu, and here we choose graphing analysis to get a plot of the estimated residuals. We choose the actual and fitted values, the residuals scaled, the density and histogram, and the autocorrelations. We click OK, and we get this output. The first one is the actual DC and the fitted one from the model, the blue one. Then we get the scale residuals. And here we note that it appears that we have here one big positive outlier and potentially one big negative outlier, at least in the sample. We can see from the density here that it does not appear to be perfectly normally distributed, the estimated residuals. In particular, we have these outliers out here, so we have fat tails. From this autocorrelation function, it is evident that we don't have a big problem with autocorrelation. Now, we might want to include some dummy variables to capture these outliers, and a useful way of, or an easy way of doing that is to go back to the test menu and then go to further output 
And here we can print the large residuals that exceed a standard error by a factor of 3.5. And here we get the output. We can see that we have two residuals that are exceeding 3.5 multiplied by the standard error. These are the dates, these are the residuals, and these are the scaled residuals. So here we have one big positive residual and we have one big negative. We might want to include a dummy variable for these two periods to get rid of this. And that might improve the normality test, but it might not be enough. So we're not going to do that here, we're just going to continue. Now, what we want to do is look at the dynamic multipliers and the long run solution. So first, go back to the test menu, click dynamic analysis, and then we look at these lag weights. So that's our dynamic multipliers. We want to graph the normalized lag weights, the accumulated normalized lag weights, as well as write the results. Click OK, and we get these two graphs, and the results are printed in the uh, results window as well. So note that these are the dynamic multipliers on top. Below we have the accumulated dynamic multipliers. Both of these have been normalized by the long run multiplier. So if we want to plot the actual dynamic multipliers instead of the normalized one, we would have to correct them for this normalization. But in order to do that, we only have to calculate the value of the long run multiplier, which we denote beta. And that is something we can do directly from the estimated coefficients we have. So we can note that the dynamic multipliers here start up here, go down, becomes negative, and then quickly converge to zero. So there's only a temporary effect of shock to dy on dc. If we look at the accumulated ones, we see that they converge to one, and that's of course because they have been normalized by the long run multiplier. So by default, these converge to one. Go back to the results, we can see that here we have the lag weights. Here is the first one, and the first one we can easily generate from up here by just taking coefficient here, 0 0.22, so that would be the usual uh, lag weight or dynamic multiplier of dy on dc. Um, but here it's been scaled by the coefficient beta, which we're going to look at next. To derive the long run solution and the long run multipliers directly in PCGIF, we go back to the test window, click on dynamic analysis, and here we have on top static long run solution. If we click OK, we get the solved static long run solution equation for DC. So here we have the coefficient to the constant term, that's what we denote alpha, and we get the coefficient to dy, which is what we de usually denote as beta. And note that we could have calculated this, this would be phi 0 plus phi 1 divided by 1 minus theta. And if you use the values, the estimated parameters on top, you can see that this is exactly what we get, 0 0.322. We get standard errors here, which are calculated from the covariance structure using the so-called delta method. And finally, we have the error correction model term written out for dc, dc minus the constant term alpha minus beta multiplied by dy. So the last thing we want to do is estimate the error correction model. And note that this is the same model that we estimate, but it's just a different representation. So to do that, we go back to our PCGIF module, formulate, and now we have to formulate the model in first differences. So this is going to be the first difference of the first difference. So that's the second difference, ddc. We have to include ddy. And then we want one back of the level. That is the first difference of c and the first difference of y. We've removed these two. So this is the error correction representation of the error correction model that corresponds to the ADL11 model we estimated above. Click OK estimate by OLS, same sample as before, and what we get out is this. First note that the value of the log likelihood is exactly the same as we got up here from before, and also note that the constant term obviously is the same. This is the same model that we had, have estimated, but it's a different representation. Also note that the misspecification tests here are identical. That's because the estimated residuals are identical to those we got from the first representation. So that's all I wanted to show for now. Thanks for watching.